Chapter 36, Clothing. Ah. Mom took me to the men's wear store in Woodstock just after Christmas for a suit fitting. She had been particularly fit. She had been very particular about the fit and color, spending entirely too long with the salesman discussing if the cloth was dark gray or charcoal. For the record, it was charcoal, and no one, and I really do mean no one, could tell the difference unprompted. A suit looked nice and made me look as much of an adult as I could, given my age. Most importantly, it matched everything. My impromptu non-asking of Sarah prompted a desperate search for matching pocket squares and boutonnieres, and matching was a big deal for one night, but I kept my mouth shut for the most part and tried to look forward to the night in question. A week before prom, must have heard, Mom must have heard Jay and I were talking about the myriad of after parties that were that were open to go to, and did something uncharacteristically cool for herself. I don't want you driving to the house or getting into trouble on prom night, she said out of the blue before school. Oh, I said quizzically. No, I don't. Why don't I plan a few site visits for work that weekend and let you trash my house? She said the last part. And let it drop like a, a large slab of wood hitting the floor of shop class. What? I gasped. I says, she held up a finger in any objection. With a joint understanding that A, you clean it up before I get home, and B, drive here sober and stay here for the rest of the night. And C, avoid any unnecessary stupid things like drug, premarital sex, and anything you do with a goat. Heard about the goat too, huh? I said, not sure how to, seriously to take mom's offer. Why do you think I bought this place, she said with a laugh. It was a goat house. This was definitely a trap, I said. How am I going to know that you won't send Dad over to ruin the party? I should hope after Christmas breakfast this year I want at least a few cool mom points, she argued. A few, I said. Thanks, Mom. We planned a, the bulk of the newly announced Bucksworth Health party on the bus ride home and filled in Sean once we got there. Sarah would provide liquid refreshments. Uh, Kylie and Jay, the sound system and rides to and from at prom, and Sean would look as cool as possible in a wheelchair. I was on cleanup and venue. The last day of school of our exams were done. It was filled with an easy classes, usually involving a movie of some sort or a party. Sean reveled in the fact that his cast had more signatures on than most people's yearbooks could hold, and they were passed as they were passed around on the lunch hour. And we rushed as we made the line for the last chance we would ever get to get Maxi Prize. All six of us, including Sarah, partaking in the Peyton County High's favorite, rode the bus home with our last trip together on the bumpy roads we lived on. The day went fast, and arguably was too fun. It was not easy to come off it was not easy to come down off of and i stepped off the bus ahead of sarah and jay the third last and i knew i would be i knew i'd miss the small community that i learned to love in even if i couldn't skateboard anywhere here eight o'clock chris sarah called from the back of the bus i smiled and started walking back to the house not noticing mom's car was gone until i found the note on the kitchen table it read chris I'm really proud of how well you did in school and life this last year. I know it was hard moving here and that you've put a lot of friends and feelings behind you, but I'm gone till Tuesday. The house is all yours. Please make sure it stays standing after your party and remember our understandings. No driving once you get here, no sex, no goats. Love, Mom. Not too many people cry after a good goat joke, but I was glad Sarah was going home to get ready in the house was be, would be empty. I had a great mom, and trust like that was the best graduation present I could have had help for. The second was from Dad, hidden in the fridge, where I hoped to find leftovers to reheat before I had to get changed. A bottle of Canadian whiskey and four six-packs of different beers filled the fridge, where I was hoping to find leftovers, topped with a small post-it note. His note was a little descriptive, but the same trust was there. No more, no less, no goats, apparently. Dad. Now I wanted to find a goat just to see if they made or broke the party. I made a grilled cheese sandwich and hoped to, hopped in the shower to get ready. After carefully make, getting into my suit and spending an inordinate amount of time fiddling with my hair and pocket squares, an old-timey car horn bleated into the quietness of the sound. Aruga! Rung out from the yard. I grabbed my wallet and house key and a thumb drive from the prank to and a thumb drive for the prank and headed outside to see what the sound, uh, see where the sound was coming from. Chapter thirty-six. Uh, links for the book are in the description below and we'll talk to you guys soon.